So in my first role, uh, since I'm in the graduate program, the first role I had, that, compared to that role, this role that I'm currently hold right now, is a lot more challenging, it's a lot more work. So, when I was in my previous role, I thought I was working a lot. And I thought I was doing well, I was, you know, I was doing a lot of work. But when I came here, the first one week, with all the you know, sincerity and seriousness, the first week was absolutely insane. I was going home really late, I was coming to the office very early, and I was still not keeping up with all of my deadlines. It was just a lot of work. Now, yeah, sure, I was learning a lot of new things along the way, so it wasn't that simple and straightforward. I had to figure a lot of things out when I was working. But as it challenged me, I, it was stressful times. Sure. But at the same time, that automatically helped me prioritize, take decisions quickly. Because if I give you, I don't know how you work, but the way I think is that I always, for whatever reason, despite all of the advice that my mom and my dad gives me, I'm a deadline-driven person. If I have a deadline, I'll get it done. If I don't have a deadline, I'm probably never going to get it done. I, I prepared this presentation this morning. I, I, I prepared it, sure. My dad would probably prepare it last night or maybe a week before. But that's, that's who it is. So, for me, personally, I believe that having deadlines is key. And also not just like official deadlines, but personal deadlines. So I have certain deadlines. I, I literally have a diary where I write down certain things. So if I have a big project, I, I try to first of all break it down to smaller pieces because otherwise it's just impossible. You can't think about all the things all at the same time. So it's a sort of a work breakdown structure, the BBS. And from that work breakdown structure, it's your personal work breakdown structure. You see all the different pieces that you need to get done and you put some. You don't have to be too fancy. You don't want to spend five hours planning and then one hour doing. But it, it helps to have that planning and helps, for me, it helps to have that personal deadline. So if something is deliverable on the 7th, I have a personal de deadline on the 5th. So that I can finish it, absolutely finish it by the 5th, and then have three days to do at all, or if something goes wrong, then I can finish it. I think, yeah, if, you're, if you think you are stressed for time, take on more responsibility, and you will see that somehow you're not. I think, I think that works. Thank you. Uh, and indeed, it's been what the challenge of a leader or manager working in an organization? I actually got that question I got it. So they asked me in a different way. They asked me um, whether I had any position of leadership and how did I handle the challenges of the leadership. So before that, you know, the question that you asked about the challenges of leadership, I think the first challenge is to realize that you as a person versus you as a leader are two different things. Obviously, at the end of the day, you are a person, but you have to work with all different types of people who may not all be like you. In fact, who will never be always like you. So, when I work in a team, especially the role that I have, although I'm a very junior person in the team, but I'm a, I'm a business analyst, so I have to do a bit of a project management work as well, especially when my manager is away. So, I'm working with very senior developers. And initially, being from Bangladesh and being from the subcontinent area, right? if, you, if you're talking to somebody senior, you don't question them. It just feels you don't want to come across as you so right? so, so those things. But eventually, I learned the fact that I have to get it done because it is my responsibility, and it would be a disrespect to my responsibility as the leader of that project not to do it, as opposed to offending people or you know, as opposed to hurting people's feelings. So. The way I would say that there's a balance. Because I've seen some leaders, again, this is a personal opinion, this is my opinion. I don't want to be harsh. I don't want to be rude. I don't want to be the kind of, I don't personally like the kind of leader who are rude, who come to your face and just you know, blast you away. I don't, I don't like that. I don't think that's good for morale. I don't think I want to work for that people in the future. And I don't see myself being that kind of leader. And then you have the complete opposite. People who are so nice, that they can't get anything done. They will never hurt people's feelings, they'll never tell anything badly, they will believe in people, they're too shy, and at the end of the day, the project is a complete mess. So I think there's a trade-off, and again, it's, it's one of those hard things. You have to pick where exactly you want to be in that high model. I think it's a balance between the two, and finding out that balance, working with all these different types of people, keeping sight of the project, 
and making, I can't think that you can make everybody happy, but making most of the people happy. Most importantly, making the right people happy. As a leader, I think that's the big, those are the biggest challenges. Uh, I'm from the research center of UNEP. So uh, on your presentation, I have seen that uh, there are two chapters that wait and break up your So is there any opportunity for us from UNEP? Can we go for it? I mean, uh, I think that we very much look for students as well as they can add value for this. So how we can communicate with you? And can you please just uh, elaborate it for like, uh, how it works for the students? Uh, we have a executive committee for HOB House of Volunteers Bangladesh. And they basically oversee all of this, but absolutely, I mean, if you have is interested, then I can certainly talk to them. And right now, I'm a bit hands off from the administration stuff, but I work on high school. Uh, but but for, yeah, by, all, by all means, I think it's very feasible, it's exciting to hear that you're, you're interested. And I'd be, I'd be more than glad to talk to the right people and see how it can be I just want to know your opinion about the newspaper. Uh, you are good for high studies such as master's or lecture or even maybe PhD. Uh, he may be good or he may be still good, but due to some cultural context or cultural barriers or a communication gap, how a student can make issue? Uh, how a student can cope up with the new culture, uh, new place, new origin? I just want to know how a new student can uh, overcome his fear. How can we communicate with the teacher or with the teacher? It's something that I have to go through personally. Right? So I went to the States in 2007 and I've been in Bangladesh all my life. So I went to the States in 2007 and it was a cultural shock. I know that now, thanks to social networks, uh, thanks to Facebook, Hollywood movies, we, we feel like we live in a globalized world, and yes, we do. But it's one thing to see things and be passive participant versus wanting to be in the middle of the action and being an active participant. So yeah, for me it was a challenge at the beginning. I wasn't as outgoing as I am now. I can't say that I'm very outgoing right now. I'm still an introvert person, I think. But it improved. And the reason it improved is you just have to you just have to ask yourself, do you like being the introvert person you are? Is it is it okay? Or you want to be a more extrovert and you want to reach out to people. Because, look, some people will always be introverted and it's just the way things are. And uh, this will come being frustrated about it. But I think it helps to be aware about the fact that you, know, you want, if, if you want to reach out to people, if you want to interact with people. And you start with small steps. For example, I remember that in my, I took a humanities class, it was a philosophy. In, although I was a student of Arashtra, we have humanities requirements, so we have to take a certain number of humanities classes. And I took a class of philosophy, and it was a very small class. And in that class, part of the grading was based on participation. So we had to ask a lot of questions in the classroom to give our opinions. And initially, I never spoke. It was a very small class, there was no place to hide. There were like 15 people. So, and everybody was very happy, in fact, too happy. I think they had their own philosophies they were talking about. It was weird. They were talking about the books that philosophers Aristotle played up. All of a sudden, everybody became philosophers and started giving their own philosophy. And I was there in the corner, you know, not speaking. And then it felt bad because I read the material, but I knew that the professor probably didn't know me very well. And sure enough, uh, the professor, not the professor, the teaching assistant for that class, he told me what the issue was, why I wasn't speaking, because it was she actually. So she was aware of the fact that I did not have communications issue. It was not that I had a huge language barrier, or that I did not understand what was going on in the class, or that I could not speak in English. It was none of that. But she was just you know, puzzled why I did not speak up. Because she asked me if 